today. Lord, we ask you to anoint, minister, touch, have your will your way. Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Let's cross those aisles, shake hands with one another. Tell us good to see you in the house of the Lord. today. Way of announcements this morning. Uh, don't forget, uh, this morning is uh, Mission Sunday, so don't forget about that today. Also, we'll be receiving our mission offering this morning. 
when we take up uh, tithes and offerings today. Also, don't forget, uh, next Sunday night we'll be having fellowship at uh, Grace Temple. So that'll be taking place next Sunday night. Then uh, we have revival starting on the 26th. Uh, on the 18th, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, there'll be a Saturday work day here at the church. Uh, we've got plenty of work to do around here on the 18th. So those things will be taking place on uh, Saturday the 18th. That's two weeks away. So those things there are, are coming up. And we're glad that you're here this morning and looking forward to what God's going to do. Uh, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings this morning. They go for the support of the church. So uh, you give as the Lord has blessed you. If you want to go ahead and uh, fill out your envelope for missions and uh, when you go back to the ATM machine, you can do that also this morning. So uh, amen. So. Uh, let's stand this morning, Brother David, you pray and ask God to bless our offerings this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done with us. We thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed upon each and every family. Father, now we ask that you bless this offering. Bless it. Bless the giver, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
good to be in that. You may be seated this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you all today. Brought your Bibles this morning. Turn with us to the New Testament today, to the book of Romans, the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Book of Romans, chapter number this morning, chapter number 12, book of Romans, chapter number 12 this morning, book of Romans, chapter number 12. We'll start with verses 1 and 2, then we'll go to 9 and 10 this morning, verses 1 and 2, then we'll go to 9 and 10 today. The Bible says this, and I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Love, let love, verse number 9, let love be without dis. Distant simulation, abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affected one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Father, Lord, we love you this morning, God. We are so thankful, Lord, for all your blessings today. Lord, we just ask that you administer touch, have your will in your way. In Jesus' name, and everybody says amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may uh, turn to your neighbor and tell them good morning this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I thought I'd go ahead and get preaching this morning. I noticed that two-thirds of you is running late, so I thought I'd better get preaching before some of you leave early this morning. Amen. That's all free. Hallelujah. I'd like to preach this morning, if the Lord would help us for a little while today. I'd like to preach this morning on love that keeps no record, that love that keeps no record this morning. When we begin to look at our scriptures here this morning, we find that love has a reason for everything in our lives today. When we, we look around this morning, love has a reason for the actions which we do. And love has a reason for the accomplishments many times that we accomplish in our lives this morning. But as we think about keeping love and the, uh, the records of reconciliation this morning, how, what does reconciliation today, when we look at that, it means, uh, if you would look at it in one sense, it would mean that it keeps no record whatsoever. It keeps no record whatsoever. The Bible tells us in Paul's writing, as his writing to the church of of Corinth in his first letter it said this though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity and become as a sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all the mysteries and all the knowledge and, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing. I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind and envieth not and vaunteth self not and is not puffed up and doeth not behave itself unseemly, seeking not her own. It is, it is not easy to provoke, to think no evil. Rejoice. Not in iniquities, but rejoice in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth this morning. I may realize that love sometimes is the key to life and the key to all of our situations that we go through in our lives this morning. One man said this about love. He said, 
I love thee, I love thee, and thou no, didst know how much I love thee, because my actions will show how much I love thee this morning. And uh, when we look at all those and we think about what is love and, and what is the, the consequences of love, what is the purpose of love this morning, uh, what is the uniqueness of love this morning, uh, what does love gain this morning, uh, what does love uh, uh, fail him this morning, uh, how does love affect every Every part of our very being this morning. Uh, when we look at those things, we also begin to wonder uh, what is it that truly, truly keeps us alive this morning. Uh, what truly, truly keeps us alive uh, is the love of God, uh, is what God can do for every one of us this morning. Uh, we find that reconciliation, uh, reconciliation means uh, to re the restore of a, the restoration of a relationship and bringing it back together this morning. It means mending pieces uh, or mending the fence uh, that may be broken this morning, uh, making sure that everything uh, is put in this morning. Uh, now, a lot of us, we have these uh, uh, different new tires. I'm needing some new tires on my uh, uh, truck, and uh, I'm kind of deciding what type to give uh, or get, should I say. Do I want to get a more aggressive tire. My truck's a four-wheel drive truck. And, uh, you know, do I want to look cool and young? Or uh, do I just want to go back with the old style? And uh, uh, you know that uh, it, it is what it is. And uh, uh, the original style that come off of it. And, but, uh, you know, I'm going through that midlife crisis. I'm going through that midlife crisis this morning. And uh, I'm thinking about the more aggressive tire. I'm thinking about making it, you know, I've already got a, li I got a lift kit on my truck already on the front end and stuff. Brought it up a couple inches and uh, did that when I first bought it and uh, leveled it out and all that. And so uh, I'm thinking now uh, these tires are about wore out, Brother David. Uh, do I really want to uh, get a little more aggressive and... Uh, you know, and with our gas going up, though, my mind's telling me, Toby, do common sense things. Keep the smaller tires. Amen. I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. But yet, as we look this morning, they come out with this new tire. Now, I'm not going to be able to afford these, but they are the new puncturous tires. How many's heard of them? That is where they are an aggressive tire for the the sports cars and uh, off-road vehicles and everything that if uh, 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 a, a a nail or something of that nature uh, punctures your tire uh, it doesn't go flat immediately it, uh, it has some type of chemical in it uh, that will help it to uh, uh, surround that whole area and it will shrink that whole area where it won't go flat and you can drive uh, several miles down the road and uh, get it fixed a little later and uh, it kind of helps out and it holds the air within it uh, but you know when we think about the heart of the Christian. The heart of the Christian needs to be kind of like these new tires that they have out that are puncturous this morning. The ordinary tires, um, they are just filled with air and you, you run over a nail or a screw or something and boom, all of a sudden you have no air in it. You're stuck along the way and all the air is sipped out. Somebody has, you either have to change it. Somebody has to come and change it for you. Uh, and, and so many times uh, that is the way we are as people. Uh, when something happens in our life, uh, somebody says something against us. Uh, somebody does something against us this morning. Uh, somebody uh, 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 stabbed us in the back. Uh, what do we do? We just let all of our air out and we lose all of the vitality of love. Uh, but I think we really need to be 
uh, like these new uh, uh, type tires uh, that when something of that nature happens uh, that we allow the spirit of the Holy Ghost uh, to come and fill that area and there we don't lose everything uh, that we truly have. How many will say amen? amen. We just kind of let it stop itself up. And the love stays in. Have you ever noticed that love can be replaced with hate just that quick? Love can be replaced with bitterness just that quick if you're not careful this morning. And so we got to be very careful on how that we look and we feel when those things happen to us. How we feel about those things. I believe that love needs to endure. Love needs to last this morning. Yes, there's consequences for our actions, for actions that has taken place. Uh, amen. The first time your your 13-year-old child, 14-year-old child, uh, when they realized that they could talk back to mom and dad, uh, amen, uh, friend, do you uh, stop loving them right then the first time they mouth back to you? No. Amen. What do you do? You keep on loving them, but you correct them in a way. Now, in my day, there was two ways of being corrected, or actually three ways of being corrected when you mouth back to your mom or your dad or somebody that or an adult this morning. Uh, the, 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 the way that you really wanted to be corrected was, okay, you're grounded for the day. Amen. That was the best scenario out of all of it. The second way was that you got your mouth washed out with soap. This younger generation, they would call that child abuse. Hallelujah. They would. Man, I tell you what, I got to liking Dale soap and Dial soap and uh, Irish Spring after a little while. It didn't taste as bad. The third thing would happen, and this was normally what happened in my home. Uh, I got the Dial soap, and then I also got the learning of the Board of Education. How many knows what the Board of Education is? If you don't know what that is, uh, uh, I will one day, uh, if you want to know, come and talk to me and uh, I'll let you bend over and I'll demonstrate for you. If you don't know what it is. But we find that so many times though in life, just because that child mouthed off to us, we don't stop loving them. We don't just throw them out and say, well, it is over with. Could you imagine if Jesus did that to us this morning? Jesus went to the very end to show how much he truly loved mankind this morning. He even takes our iniquities and our sins and he throws them into the depths of the sea to never be brought up again in our lives this morning. So we've got to realize how important it is to understand how much God loves every one of us this morning, how much God sees within us today. But as we look at this this morning, reconciliation, for reconciliation to ever take place, there must be a sense of forgiveness. Before we could ever be reconciled to God, we had to ask for our forgiveness. Amen. Some people this morning, the hardest thing for them to do is to say, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Hallelujah. Amen. When's the last time you've had to ask somebody to forgive you? Anybody here this morning? When's the last time you needed to ask somebody to forgive you and you didn't do it because of your pride? Bless the Lord, I'm not going to ask them to forgive me. I didn't create this mess. Amen. I'm not the one who is guilty of charge this morning. 
Every one of us sometimes we think of that way, do we not? I know I do at times. Hallelujah. And whenever I think those times, I tell Sheila, you need to ask me to forgive you. Hallelujah. But there's times that I have to go and, and ask somebody to forgive me for what I have done, for the action that I've taken this morning. One man, he gave us this, and he said there is nine reasons to forgive. If you've got a pencil or a pen, some of you better write this down this morning and put it in your Bible so that you'll have it. Amen. Nine reasons to forgive. Why must I forgive? First of all, let's just get it done this morning. Turn your neighbor this morning, anybody that is sitting close to you, if it's your spouse or if it's your child or somebody else even, just turn to them and get some practice in and say, will you forgive me today? Some of you still haven't done it. David said he's thinking about it. Will you forgive me this morning? Now, how many feel better just getting that load off of you? Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You just feel so much better. It's kind of a cleansing, isn't it? But nine reasons why to forgive this morning. The number one reason that you forgive this morning in all the surveys of all time is so that you don't go to hell. The number one reason. Number two this morning, we forgive so the devil won't get a foothold in our lives this morning. Number three, we forgive so that the devil won't, uh, won't outsmart us this morning. Number four, we forgive so that our faith will work today. Number five, we forgive so that our bitterness won't defile those around us this morning. Do you know your unforgiveness that, that goes into bitterness not only affects you, but it affects affects everybody that's around you. They can taste it. They can hear it. They can see it. They can smell it this morning. Even your dog or your cat knows it this morning. It affects everybody this morning. We find that we forgive so that we don't die of stress-related disease of unforgiveness this morning. Number seven, we forgive, and I think this is one of the best reasons. We forgive because we want to be like Jesus. And we want to have complete empathy with the Father this morning. What did Jesus do when he looked down on the cross? That at those that had crucified them, his first words to the Father was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do this morning. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do this morning. Friend, if we want to be intimate with the Father this morning, we've got to have the same heart attitude of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we're to receive the Spirit of Christ. Part of the working of the Holy Spirit is receiving the Spirit of Christ. And that is meaning taking upon the heart attitude of Jesus this morning. Friend, there's those that have been by you. There are those this morning that have kicked you aside. There are those this morning that have said ill things against you. But do you want to be like the devil, a man that is kicked out of heaven this morning and leading a third of the angels with him? Or do you want to be like God the Father and God the Son that says, Come unto me and I will give you rest, amen, that he says he forgives all manner of sin and iniquity today. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's where we got to be this morning. 
we got to have that spirit of forgiveness. Amen. We forgive so we won't do something really evil. Amen. Unforgiveness leads to traits of evilness in our lives this morning. Unforgiveness calls David's family, not David Lopez, but David in the Bible, calls David's family in the Word of God much heartache. When one of the daughters was raped, the boys went down and they killed the boy and they slew him. And there was blood on the hands of that family this morning. Unforgiveness, much harm was done. We find that Jacob had to run from Esau because of what he had done to Esau. And he never knew he ran for his life because of unforgiveness. It took over 40 years for that wound to be healed up, for reconciliation to be taken place this morning. We find that Cain this morning had a more excellent sacrifice this morning. Oh, and there was a result of the first death this morning. Friend, when we look at it, unforgiveness will cause us to do something that is evil. You say, well, I won't ever get that dramatic. But no, you'll get on the phone and you'll gossip about that individual, about that person this morning. Some of you have ex-spouses this morning. How much gossip have you said about that ex-spouse? And your children feel that turmoil and that hate and that unforgiveness and those around you this morning. Friend, I'm not saying that the divorce wasn't necessary. I'm not saying they may have been mean or something to you. I don't know. But what I'm telling you this morning, you can't hold on to that because eventually it will cause you and affect you and it will affect everybody that is around you this morning. Hallelujah. Things I've learned is that sometimes I just got to let some things go. It's not easy to do that. Amen. Especially somebody with my brain. I can't remember your phone number, but I can remember everything that you ever said to me. Except your phone number. Don't ask me why. Amen. And most of you are the same way. I, you can remember those things. And we've got to learn to let it go. To let it fly off. To let it go into the outermost. And ninthly this morning, those who forgive will have a life of success. A life of success. You say, you mean if I forgive, I'll automatically become a millionaire? No, amen. Hallelujah. I think it was Wednesday morning, Sister Sheila and I, she was off, and so we hadn't come over to the church yet or whatever, and I got this phone call Wednesday morning. And uh, she's sitting there in her chair, and I, I'm thinking about getting ready to go, do, go to the church and do everything. And, and uh, I answer this phone call, and... Uh, I seen it was from Canada. Canada. Well, my sister's in Canada right now, all right? So, you know, immediately when you see somebody's phone call from Canada, and my niece lives in Canada, just had a baby last week, and I, I thought, well, maybe my sister's using my niece's phone to call me about something going on in Canada. You know, I don't know. Hallelujah. Sherry's the only one to tell us something about them Canadian folks. I don't know. And so uh, I answer it. I say, hello. And this guy, he says, are you Mr. Toby Highfaker? I said, yes. I said, okay, I hope this isn't in the hospital or something. I said, yes, I am. Do you know that you have won? 
$2.5 million? I said, is that so? Said, yes. Said, uh, you have gambled and you have won $2.5 million. Said, have you not got the package in the mail yet? I said, and Sheila's over there. She said, be nice, Toby. Be nice, Toby. I said, $2.5 million? Yeah. Somebody tells you you won $2.5 million. All of a sudden, your mind starts going, man, I can do this and I can do that. I, I can buy this. I don't have to worry about some aggressive tires because I'm going to sell my truck and I'm going to get one that already has all those aggressive tires. Hallelujah. And all this stuff. And he just kept on. He said, yes, on that scratch off. I said, sir, I've never bought a scratch off in my life. I don't even know what you're talking about. I've never been in a casino in my life, amen. I, I don't have time for that. But if you want to send me the 2.5, that's fine. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, I just hung up. And Sheila said, be nice, be nice. I said, man, that's false hope. Hallelujah. That's false hope. Some people today, they think, well, success is measured by what you have or what you can contain, can get or obtain, excuse me. What you can possess this morning. They measure success by their bank accounts, by their cars, by their homes, by their toys. And they say that is success. But here when I say you've got to look, forgive to be successful this morning. The only way that we're going to hear well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Is have that spirit of forgiveness. The only way we're ever going to hear well done my son. Is to have that spirit of of forgiveness this morning. And so this morning, successful people are those who learn to forgive this morning. Now, you don't have to go around the whole world being mad all the time. Are you going to get upset? Oh, yeah, you get upset. Every one of us does. But it doesn't have to dictate our lives. The Bible says you can be angry and sin not. Where the sin part comes is how you respond to your anger. Amen. How many follow what I just said? How you respond to your anger this morning. What you do with that this morning. Do you carry it on and let it dictate everything about you? I have found out in times past that some people are not worth me giving them the time of being angry at. It's not worth being, it's not worth it this morning. Because they don't deserve that. You say, what do you mean they don't deserve that? Friend, if they're just out to destroy you, just show them love. Treat them well. They may never be your best friend. Be patient with them when needs be. But treat them well. I'm not saying you have to infer all things from them. But you do have to understand they cannot dictate every moment, every breath of your life. If you've learned to forgive them and say, you know what? When Satan brings it up, Satan get the behind me because greater is he that liveth within me than he that liveth within the world and I am not going to let that dictate who I am this morning because I'm not a child of Hades but I'm a child of God that taught us how to love that taught us how to forgive that taught us how to treat one another this morning 
Give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. And I'm not even on my introduction this morning. Hallelujah. That was all the prefects before my introduction this morning. <laughs> but I want to talk to you just a minute this morning. And I'm going to go through this quickly this today. Paul says, love, in verse number 9 this morning of our reading from Romans, love without disassimilation this morning. That means without being a hypocrite is what that means. Now the Greek word here this morning that you would use in this phrase is anna. Anna Ada Patia. And this morning, it means without play acting. For me to truly love, I cannot play act. Because our true colors will eventually come to light. Amen. It eventually proved who it is this morning. The picture that Paul gives us is a stage in the Greek theater where the actors identify themselves by wearing different masks. And the apostle said, there is no play acting on how we are to love. Amen. Normally we think about masks at Halloween time. Even though we as Christians, we don't celebrate it, but we do think of it, of masks at Halloween time. Where kids come to your door and they're dressed as their favorite superhero. Amen. They're dressed as their favorite ballerina, favorite sports figure, or just something weird or odd. And for a moment... Those little children, they think in their mind that's who they are. If you bought a little boy a, a, a little Spider-Man suit, he goes around, what is he doing? He's throwing that web out. He's thinking he's Spider-Man. And the minute he jumps off of your roof, you'll know he's not Spider-Man on the way to the emergency room. A little girl goes around doing this on her tippy toes. In that moment, she thinks she's a ballerina or a princess because they are play acting this morning. But how many times do we as adults and we as Christians, we say or we play act that we are one thing, but we really feel as though we are something else? Oh, we put on our religious mask and we come to church and we sing the songs. But friend, it can't be a religious mask. It has to be something that is down deep within us uh, that is only created uh, through the love of the Father, through the Son, uh, that is sealed by the Holy Spirit uh, that dwells within you this morning uh, because God, amen, has revealed to you the truth that love cannot be a play mask, uh, that love has no dissimulation, uh, but love must be true this morning. Uh, you either love God or you don't love God. You either love God enough to serve him or you don't love him this morning. There's no halfway. You don't fall in in and out of love this morning. So this morning, as we look here, actions should attest to the fact motivating love that believers towards one another is sincere, it's not selfish, 
Sometimes we make love complicated. <laughs> if you ask a young couple, are you all in love? Well, it's complicated. No, it ain't. Either you are or you aren't. Amen. Do you, do you love her enough to get married to her? Well, it's complicated. No, it isn't. Hallelujah. Come on now. Either you do or you don't this morning. And I'm not talking about just that friendship that you want with her or him. I'm talking about do you want to spend the rest of your life with this individual because you love them this morning. It's friend, that's the way it is with God. Our love for God and our love towards God and God's love towards us is not complicated. It says, for God so loved, everybody say that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life this morning. Why? Because God loves us this morning. He didn't say, for God so loved the world that he will just pick who he wants to love, then they are the only one. We do not believe in predestination this morning. We are not Calvin us this morning. We believe in free will that anybody can be saved. No matter who walks through those back doors, no matter what stock of a lifestyle they come from, for in God loved them so much that he sent his son to die upon a cross for him. And we've got to have that same type of love this morning. We've got to have that this morning. Don't complicate it today. I have four dimensions of Paul that Paul teaches us this morning of love. Four dimensions, first point this morning. Four dimensions of it. You're just lucky this morning. I only have one point today. Uh, only one, but there's four dimensions of this one point this morning. Four ways of love to be demonstrated. When's the last time you've done something to demonstrate your love towards God? Towards God. This morning, I, I was down praying like I do every Sunday morning. I was in the living room. I get up about an hour before Sheila does on Sunday mornings, and I go in there, and I spend my time in prayer and get my mind all ready for the service. And, and I noticed after about... 30 minutes of praying. But David, all I was saying was, God, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to fix this situation. I need you to touch here, Lord. I need your attention in this problem. I need you, Lord, to, to come and, 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 and minister to this need. After about 30 minutes of just praying that way, Finally, I thought, you know what? For the first 30 minutes, all I've told God is what I need of him. I, I, I knelt down and I said, God, forgive me. Let me just take time to bask in your presence. Let me just to begin to tell you how much I love you. And Lord, all those things that I just told you that I thought I had need of and our church has need of and individuals this morning that have need of, God, I pray this morning that you'll help them. But forgive me, I forgot to tell you first and foremost how much I adore you. How much I love you, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon me, God. Thank you for the good things of life. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have supplied for me according to your riches in heaven this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the healings in my body. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful plan of salvation. That's so great, a plan of salvation that cannot be any more perfect for the lost of souls of mankind. I just begin to thank him and I quit thinking about what all I really wanted to say about what I needed. But so many times when we go to God, all we do is we tell him what we need or what we think we need this morning. The first thing this morning 
under this four dimensions of love this morning, demonstrations of love. The believer is to love by hating evil. The believer is to love by hating evil this morning. Every one of us realize we live in a evil society nowadays. Amen. We are this morning in verse number 9 of our reading here. It says to love without dissimulation. Abhorred that which is evil. That word abhorred comes from a word that goes like this. Apostagoa. Apostagoa. And is a very strong meaning to hate with an intense feeling this morning. We're to hate that which is evil. The Bible says that men in the last days will become lovers of evil and haters of righteousness. Sin has prevailed all around us this morning. Love desires today the best for people. Love hates that which causes evil to destroy life this morning. <clears throat> to destroy the works of God. Amen. Paul said to abstain from the very presence of evil this morning. Another place the psalmist wrote, David in his 34th Psalm, he said, Depart from evil and do good, seek peace. And pursue it. Depart. Seek peace. And pursue it this morning. Do you know if you're looking for evil. You will find fo- plenty of followers. You don't have to go very far. You'll find somebody. To latch onto this morning. You'll become a parasite. Of something this morning. That eventually. Is going to destroy your life today. That's going to destroy your hope this morning. So a believer's love by hating evil this morning. The Bible says this in Proverbs: uh, Turn not right to turn not to your right or to your left, uh, but remove thy feet from evil or thy foot from evil. Basically, what he's saying. Don't give room for the enemy. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is heaven this morning. Keep your heart near close to Jesus Christ this morning. And you'll find that evil will flee from you today because it will have no residence in your house or in your spiritual life. When we love. When you love God with all your heart. Secondly, the believer goes on and says here in verse number 9. He says, cleave. Cleave to that which is good. The New King James Version says, cling to that which is good this morning. Now, In the modern day, if Paul was writing the scripture in today's world, he would have said this. Super glue that which is good. Not even super glue, but get you some gorilla glue. Hallelujah. Gorilla tape. Any of you ever use that stuff? Amen. It is some good stuff. Especially that gorilla tape. I got a little magnet on the back of my phone here that hangs on a little ball in my truck. So 
so that I can see uh, when I need a direction where to go and different things like that. And uh, that magnet, and that little ball, and everything was a pretty good little prize. But because I'm on the road all the time, I needed visual of it before they had to know where you had the app that you can download into your car and you can see where you're going that way. And so I bought it, but it wasn't but a few days that that magnet came off. It was just a stick-on magnet. So I went and bought some super glue. And I super glued that back on. And friend, it worked good till it got 110 degrees down here. And it just came right off. Then I went and bought some other stuff and tried this, tried some 3M glue and 3M tape and all this. Finally, I went and got me some gor Gorilla Tape, two-sided Gorilla Tape. It's been on there now for two years and hasn't come off because it clings. Hallelujah. And this morning, the same way with our love to God, we should cling to that which is good. Hallelujah. He meant disdain that which is evil today, but look to that which is good. And it means join together or fasten together that nothing can tear it apart. And this morning, that is what true love for the believer is. When we to that which is good. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Neither height nor depth. Nothing can separate us. We cling to that which is good. Amen. And it all should be good. Thirdly, this morning, the believer, amen, shows Shows his love for somebody. The Bible goes on here and he says, Cling to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another in brotherly love. That word affection. Amen. Everybody say that with me this morning. Affection. Oh, I have affection for you. That word affection refers to the kind of love that exists between a husband and a wife. That affection that they have. The kind of love that the husband and wife have for their children, amen, that affection that you have this morning. We as family of God this morning, we've literally been adopted by the Father as sons and daughters of His. Therefore, the believer is to live as a family with one another. Having that affection for one another. John records the words of Jesus when he says, A new commandment I give you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye love one another because all men shall know that you are my disciple if you love one another, that affection, another place Paul wrote and he said, be ye kind one to another, tender hearting, forgiving one another, even as Christ Jesus has forgiven you, that affection to one another dwells among the members of family, I only see my sister's one, I see her once or twice a year. The other one, we may see each other every four years, sometimes a little more. But immediately, whenever we see one another, 
There's that drawness that is there. Amen. It doesn't mean that we agree on everything. It doesn't mean that we okay all of our actions, each other's actions. It doesn't mean that we haven't had those sibling fusses that all siblings have at times. But there's that affection. I, if one of my sisters needed help, I'd do anything in the world to help them the best I could. I would go out of my way to help them. And they would go out of their way to help me. I told you all ago that my parents, they had a three aspects of handling discipline with me. Amen. The grounding, the soap, and the board of education. Those sisters loved me so much that whenever I would get in trouble, they would start, Daddy, Daddy, please don't whip him. He didn't mean to do that. They come to my aid. Hallelujah. Now, when they got in trouble, I said, Daddy, Daddy, lay it on them. Hallelujah. I was going to their aid because they needed it. Hallelujah. But they would come to our aid. This morning as children of God, that should be part of our church. That when we walk in here, there's a love. Not saying that we don't agree, disagree from time to time. Not saying we're going to let you overrun us from time to time. But all of a sudden, we are of the same family. We are made joint heirs through Christ Jesus. And there's that bond. It doesn't matter this morning if you're Caucasian, if you're Hispanic this morning, if you're African American this morning, if you're Asian this morning, if you're Indian this morning. That doesn't matter. Why? Because we're made of the same dirt. He meant that God formed man out of. And there should be a love for humanity among us without any disinciliation in it this morning. It should be there, kindly, showing kindly affection. And lastly, this is probably the hardest one. We're closing as Sheila comes. And the only reason this morning I'm closing right now is because of this last point this morning. Hallelujah. Come on up here, Sheila, this morning. The believer should show love by Preferring one another. I realize you've all sat about as long as you can this morning. And my love for you understands I need to let you go before you call the police and say I'm holding you hostage this morning. Hallelujah. Preferring that love. Preferring means to go ahead, to go be before. To lead. Giving place for one another this morning. Not holding those grudges and heartaches. One of my favorite little comics outside of Hobbs, Calvin and Hobbs, is Charlie Brown. How many of you like Charlie Brown? He just gets to the simple things of life, doesn't he? He only has a couple hairs. I guess that's the reason why I identify with him now. Hanging out from his head. But Charlie Brown, this morning, may be right when he says he loves mankind. Sometimes it's the people he can't handle. You see, this morning, we're to love people in general. 
more than just an individual. When I look across this building this morning outside of my wife, I love every one of you the same. I don't see color. I don't see race. I don't see age. I don't see none of that. I just see humanity. I see people. Oh, there may be some in the congregation this morning that I have more in common with. Those who like sports, I can talk sports. Those who like to hunt, I can talk hunting with them. Those who like to work on their houses, I can talk that. Those who love church, I can talk that with them. Yeah. Those who like to cook, I can talk that with them. Those who like to talk about cleaning their house, I don't talk to you much about that. Amen. Those who like to wash cars, I don't talk with you about that either. But there's things that I have in common with you this morning. Brother Natale, he likes baseball. I talk with him about baseball, so he's getting all geared up. Man, he's getting ready for it. The Yankees are going to overtake the Mets, and he's going to have another down season. Man, he's getting ready for it. Brother David, he likes him and Sister Amy. They like him hooking. I'm just waiting for the day that they join the SEC so our teams can beat them every game, beat them like it's their team. I don't like them, but I'll still talk to them. Others of you, you like this thing, you like that thing. And we talk about those things. Sister Jenny, she loves to volunteer. And we talk about her days of volunteering. She goes down there and helps feed the poor. We need more people to do that. Amen. But so many times we think, well, so and so don't love me. It's not that so and so don't love you. You may not have a lot in common, but they still love you. They still love you. Or they may be intimidated by you. People tell me all the time you're intimidating. I look at them and think, I, I'm five foot nine and a half. What is intimidating about that? You're intimidating. I don't never want to, anybody to feel intimidated. I always want to be approachable. I may not stand there for 20 minutes and let you go on and on about something that takes 30 seconds. But I always want to be approachable because I see everybody the same. Here we find that the believer is to take lead in expressing For esteeming, building up. It's the reason why when I hear something in this church, somebody done something good, graduated from college, or got a great job, I'll make a, a, a little something about them just to let us know that, hey, man, this is all great. All these good things that are happening, man, and all these wonderful things. Uh, tomorrow, Sherry and, and Brian have an a, a anniversary tomorrow. Give them a big hand. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Amen. Tuesday, Michelle and Michael have an anniversary. Give them a big hand. You know, that's that's an accomplishment in today's world. When you think about those things uh, that are going on in their lives this morning, uh, Michelle back there, uh, amen, she had a birthday this week. Give her a big hand. Brother Adam's turning older than dirt this week. Give him a big hand. <laughs> going on in people's lives. It happens. we got to let them know that. Can we love them so much? Can we stand this morning?
See, the world is not about me, myself, and I. The world is about those around us. How we affect those around us. How we help those around us. How we consider those. This month, when we think about this month, we always think about love because of Valentine's. Amen. And preferring one another and showing gratitude towards those loved ones. But this morning when we come up here, I want us to pray and say, God, help us to demonstrate the type of love that you want. Help us to abhor that which is evil and to cling to that which is good this morning, God. Help us this morning, God, to be kind and affectionate and preferring and honoring one another this morning, God, and giving praise for them. And not to take ourselves so seriously. How many would do that with me this morning? Can we get around these altars this morning? You young people, you're very important this morning. All of you that are here. Let's just raise those hands. 